So, Mr. Dickman, what's Hi, your Jay. name? Tell us Dime why you're here today. Sir, let's start off on the right foot. My name is Robert Henry Dykeman, okay? Yes, sir. You understand? All right, Mr. Dickman, continue on. I'm not going to conduct an interview <laughs> where you can't even get my name right, so please. Dykeman. Mr. Dykeman. Thank you. Please, tell me about yourself. Well, like I said, my name is Robert Henry Dykeman. I am 27 years old. Um, I grew up in New York City, as a matter of fact. You wouldn't necessarily think someone like me grew up in the South, would you? But I did. I grew up in New York City. Uh, I moved out here when I was 19. Why'd you move out here? Well, I was originally... Well, let me give you a background about my family. A little background. Uh, my father was a very, very successful lawyer in New York City. He made a lot of money. What was his name? His name was Reginald. Reginald Dickman? Reginald, Reginald Dykeman. Okay. Okay. So, he's a very successful lawyer. And my, I have two brothers. I'm the youngest of my family. Both of them went to college, and then went on to become very successful lawyers like my father. I was on the same track as they were. I went to college, went to Manhattan College, but eventually dropped out. Why did you drop out? It just wasn't the place for me. I didn't want to become a lawyer. Right. And ever since that day, ever since that, that day I dropped out, my, my parents have just shunned me. They were paying for my college, mm. but after I dropped out, man, I haven't even heard them say a word to me since. How does that make you feel? Well, not great, but it's just, even if I don't still have a conversation with my parents at all, it's still nice to know that I come from a rich family in New York City. All right, all right. But, uh, so to get back to your question, how did I get here? Like I said, my parents didn't pay for anything after that. I didn't have a job, didn't go to school, didn't get any money from my parents. So I had to, I had to be on the streets looking for some way to get money. What did you turn to? Well, what didn't I do? I was a street performer for a little bit. I, honestly, it wasn't necessarily the money that was important. It was just trying to survive. So, I mean, I ended up stealing bread, stealing whatever I could to eat. But regardless, one day I was, I was working, or I was watching one of my colleague street performers, because I remember I was street performer for a little bit. I was watching one of him, oh, well, I was watching him perform, and it was actually a, I do an act. I was actually going to go on with him and perform with him. But right before I get on stage, I get tapped on the shoulder for from the man I now know as Frederick Frolic, and he says, <clears throat> "Well, you look like a very nice young boy. How would you like to make some money?" And I said, "Sure." So that you assume do. prostitution when he when he first no, met of you, or no. no? Okay. I was going to hear him out. All right. I was all just right. going to assume things. Okay. I said, sure, what, what do you want me to do? He says, I need you to take this here letter to this person. And I read who it was, and it was a very wealthy known, a very wealthy female in the New York City area. Mm -hmm. And so I did it. He told me to meet him at a popular cafe the next day after I had little letter. And so I did. I met him at the cafe. And he said, did you do it? And I said, yes, I did it. And he said, wow, I've never had someone do a job for me that was done so fast and so efficiently. How would you like to come work for me? What did you say to him? I was speechless. I mean, I, all I did had, I've only given a letter to someone. I didn't do much. I didn't, like, rake a field. I just... Gave a letter to someone, yet he offered me a job. And so that was that was just amazing. And so he flew me down to New Orleans and 
it's where I've been ever since. I'm working as a personal valet now, and haven't talked to my parents still, but I don't care anymore because I'm I know I'm better off than I ever would have been as a lawyer in New York City. All right, all right. Tell me a little bit about your romantic history, both New York and now that you're down south. It's not great. No. No. It was. It was easier in New York because I had a lot more in common with people in New York. People out here, I just don't understand. But, I mean, I'm single, so as you can tell. Ready to mingle? Or? Uh, uh, let's just say I'm single. But, I don't know. And I haven't really gotten the flirting thing down. No? But, I'm trying. Who knows, though? All right, so just one last question for you, Mr. Uh, Dykeman. Dykeman. So, given that your name is, is so obviously spelled, you know, Dickman, mm -hmm. what, what, are you, what are you compensating for with, with the Dykeman pronunciation that's going around? Well, like any surname, no. I don't choose it. No. So, the fact that you think that I am compensating for something because my surname is Dykeman, spelled like Dickman, yep. has me offended that you would even ask such a question. It makes me think that you are just reading questions off of a notebook, let's say, because you can't think for yourself. Because anyone who thinks for themselves would know that it's a last name. And if it's a last name, I didn't choose it. So. I want to finish this interview by saying, you're dumb, and you should think about what you say before you say it. Great? Thank you. It's nice talking to you. Very delightfully talking to yeah. you, Mr. Dickman. Oh.